In this demo, we'll see how you can get started with Terraform configuration to manage storage resources on Dell PowerFlex. Watch this introductory video that covers basics of Terraform for Dell infrastructure. Here we have a PowerFlex instance where there is a protection domain and a storage pool already set up. Let us see how we can use the Terraform provider for PowerFlex to get information from this instance and then create and modify a volume. Here we have the configuration code organized into multiple files as per the convention for Terraform projects. In the versions.tf, we define the required providers with the exact versions to be imported from the Terraform registry and the PowerFlex instance to be used with the provider. The 1.0 release of the PowerFlex provider comes with data sources and resources covering the frequently used elements of PowerFlex storage management. In the main.tf, the main configuration is defined in different code blocks for data sources, resources, and outputs of the configuration. Here are some data sources to fetch information from the PowerFlex instance. We also have an output block here that prints out the data source details captured from all the volumes that it discovers. Note that I'm using variables to reference some of the PowerFlex elements and defining them in variables.tf instead of hard coding them in the main configuration. This parameterizes the configuration, making it easy to maintain and reuse. Now let us run this configuration as is. Terraform configurations are executed in three steps, init, plan, and apply. The really useful thing about Terraform plan step is that we can review all the changes that will happen in the apply step before actually making the changes. The plan step also clearly shows the one-to-one -one binding of the configuration to the actual infrastructure. It also reflects item potency principle that Terraform adheres to. Since our configuration just has data sources, we see changes just to the volume data source output. Before running Terraform apply, we can see that the Terraform state doesn't have any items listed here. Now let us run Terraform apply to make the changes. And once the execution completes, we can examine the outputs and also see that the Terraform state now includes the data sources we defined. Now let us include a resource block to create a volume with some basic attributes. In the plan step, we can see that a volume resource is being added to the state as defined. And the apply step creates the volume that we can see in the PowerFlex UI. Now let us make some changes to the volume by expanding the capacity and map it to a particular STC using one of the examples on GitHub repo. Note that we are making changes to the same resource code block of the volume we just created since there is a binding between this code block and the volume on PowerFlex. In the plan step, we can see the changes that we just made to the resource and then run apply to make the change and also verify it in the PowerFlex UI. Great. Now let us repeat the process to create another volume with unique identifiers. In the plan step, you can see that Terraform shows the new volume it is going to create as expected but see that it will also destroy the earlier volume and it does this to maintain the one-to-one -one binding of the configuration state with the infrastructure. The code doesn't have the volume resource declared for the earlier volume so Terraform destroys the physical volume to maintain the declared state. So to keep the physical volume we need to keep it in the configuration code as well. Note that you can also use many of the Terraform programming constructs like conditionals and loops to create larger and more complex configurations. Thank you for watching the demo.